Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about dynamic programming. Now, dynamic programming itself is probably one of the most important concepts in competitive coding in general and will help you to solve some of the more complicated problems on Code Chef, Hacker Rank, Top Coder, a lot of those popular online competitive programming sites. I love to participate in those and this is something that's helped me immensely in specifically the more complex problems that you will have to solve. Now a lot of the problems that you're solving on some of those sites have time limits. So you have a specific amount of time to solve a certain problem. You have a specific runtime, essentially. Now when you're running complicated equations, especially with big O notations of you know, n squared or to the nth power, you're going to have significant time to be able to run that problem. Now you don't always have that amount of time in the real world you can probably get away with a little bit longer of algorithms or taking more time to solve certain problems, but in the world of competitive coding, time is extremely valuable, especially runtime. Let's talk about how dynamic programming can help solve some of those runtime issues. Okay, so I've got my trusty iPad here and we'll talk through some of the concepts of dynamic programming in general. So let's go ahead and title this. Now, the concepts of dynamic programming aren't all that complex. So if we talk about how it works in general, we're going to try and keep this to be a very short video explaining the concepts of what dynamic programming is. Okay, to explain this, let's start with a quick example. Now the example that we're going to take here is a Fibonacci number addition. So let's say we're trying to add up the numbers beneath a specific Fibonacci number. Now I'll change colors here. So if our question is, we need to find the value of a specific Fibonacci number, and that number can be um, five in this case. Now let's give ourselves a quick little note here. One, one, two, three, five, eight, you know, and so forth with the Fibonacci numbers. But if our program is supposed to solve the addition of the specific Fibonacci number and everything below it, and in this specific example, you're gonna say, okay, five plus three, plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 equals 12. Now as you do that addition then you say okay well now I want to find let's change our color here now I want to find the value of the same thing but for 13. Now you have to do 13 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. Now in this case, you're doing 21, 26, 30, 33. But wouldn't it be so much faster if you could say, okay, all I have to do is the 13 and the 8, and I know that I've already done this additional bit because it's right here. So you can say, okay, I've already got my 12, which is the value for that f of 5 and I can add that to 13 and 8 and get the same value of 33 and obviously much faster. Now if you're doing this at a massive scale it's going to be much more beneficial to you to save the values of the other sub problems. This is a very very simplified solution and finding the additive value of Fibonacci numbers is really not that complicated but it shows to sh the example of keeping track of previous sub problems as you go to find a solution to an overall programming or coding issue. So in this circumstance saving the f of 5 is going to make the f of 13 run so much faster and that's essentially how dynamic programming works. So we would save that f of 5 into an array and then next time we wanted to call it, for example this f of 13 would call the f of 5, we are then going to be able to copy that existing value and not do all those additions all over again. Okay, so to sum up how that works in general, dynamic programming is a way for you to separate a, a larger problem into sub-problems and save the values of those sub-problem solutions as you go throughout your program runtime. Because as you do, you'll save a significant amount of time and then all of those previous efforts won't be wasted. You won't have to do them all over again. And there are many circumstances where you will need to use dynamic programming in your competitive coding and I'll go through lots of those in future walkthroughs and in future explainer videos like this one. So if you like this, don't forget to comment, like the video below, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.